spiritual gifts, the nine spiritual gifts, understanding the nine spiritual gifts, uh, that they can be used in, in, in the believers who have received, been filled with, baptized in the Spirit. These gifts cannot operate. Everybody say cannot. Cannot, cannot operate in unbelievers or, or mankind alone. They are only operated in people filled with the Spirit. Amen. The nine spiritual gifts, they are spiritual and therefore must be used in, in, in the Spirit. Okay? Uh, these gifts, as we go through these gifts, I want you to understand that there are diversities of gifts. There are diversities of operations and different administrations. What, what does that mean? That means if two people have the same gift, you'll notice a lot of times, uh, especially new believers will say, well, if those two people have the same gift, shouldn't they act the same way? No, because the Bible says there are different gifts and different operations and different administrations. So a lot of times you'll see one person use a gift differently from what another person who has the same gift it wouldn't do the holy spirit much good if everybody that had the same gift did everything in the same way so the bible will tell you that that we are to use them in different ways and different operations first corinthians chapter 12 if you are there shout lord lord well, that's good wow <laughs> may the word change me, may the word change me. we're going to start at verse number four and it's going to say this, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation, here it is, of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one, here, here's the gifts, to one is given the word of wisdom. Through the Spirit, that's the first one. To another, the word of knowledge, that's the second one. Through the same Spirit. To another, faith, there's another one. By the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings, that's another one. By the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. And to another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. So here we understand that in these verses, there are the, ver the, the gifts are going to be used differently. There are nine spiritual gifts, <clears throat> and that the Spirit can give these gifts to whoever he pleases. God has given the Spirit the ability to give these gifts as he desires. So there's nine of them. As we look at the nine of them, we have the word of wisdom. We have the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Now, there are nine gifts, but that does not mean that the spirit is limited to manifesting only in the gifts. I'll get into that much later. The spirit sometimes manifests in your weeping. Sometimes the Spirit will manifest in your laughter. Sometimes the Spirit manifests in your dance. And that's all Scripture. But we'll get into that just a little bit later, okay? I don't want to get ahead of myself. How many of you have ever been to heaven before? Been to heaven? Been to heaven. Anybody ever rode a plane, went to heaven? No. How many of you have ever been to Mexico? How many of you have been to Spain? How many of you have been to... To Canada, how many of you have been to Germany? How many of you have been to France? You've been to other places. Bo, if you remember when we were in the Dominican Republic, and when I stood up to preach in the Dominican Republic, I was speaking in English, because that's what I speak. So when I stood up to preach in the Dominican, and when I have been talking to Brother Mark about going to Poland, in order to minister in those areas, we have to have someone give a translation, an interpretation of what we're saying. Because the language that I speak does not make sense to them. When I was at the Dominican, or at Walmart, you know, whatever. I used to work in retail, man, and folks would come in, and, you know, and they just, you know, I'm standing at the register, and they're, they're having a conversation. I'm like, I don't have a clue what you people are saying. If you've never been to heaven, how do you know what heaven's language sounds like? You see, here's, here's, my wife was telling me the other day, she said, Honey, one of the greatest things you ever said that just enlightened me was when you actually just told us, she said, you have to know that heaven, 
Heaven's language is not English, people. I know you would like it to be. But heaven, heaven, heaven's a little bit like the U.S. in this way. When you buy something, your owner's manual is 78 pages long because they print 10 different languages. And you're trying to flip through it and you're just like, dear Lord, where is English in this thing? Well, I'm made to believe that heaven can speak English, but heaven's language is not English. He- English wasn't even the original language. You want to go back to being Aramaic? You want to go back to being Greek and those things? Those were the languages spoken in the Bible days. So what makes, what makes Americans think that heaven just speaks English? So doesn't it make sense that when heaven wants to speak to us, that sometimes in order for heaven to speak to us, he's got to do it through a heavenly language. And sometimes it's not meant for everybody to know what's being said. And then there are other times where it's meant, so when it's meant for us to know what's being said, that heaven will send an interpreter. Just go ahead ahead and tell your neighbor, heaven don't speak English. 